What's up, everybody? It's Jacob with J&J Engraves. Going to be going over today how to do some uh, more advanced editing with Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop Elements, which is like a cheap, bare-bones version of Photoshop that you buy one time and it's yours to keep. Um, I'm using the 2021 version. I guess they come out with one every year. And uh, I have the 2021 version. So if you're using 2022 or full-on Photoshop, it'll look a little different. You can also use these uh, the same method in GIMP if you know how to work around that program and use these same menus. I think they're called different things, but they do essentially the same thing. Um, but GIMP's free to download, and it's a pretty cool program if you don't have it. Um, we're using GIMP, and then we're using Lightburn as uh, our engraving software. I'm going to be engraving on Baltic Birch Wood, and I'm using a 100-watt CO2 with a 2.5-inch lens focus. Other than that, uh, pretty self-explanatory stuff uh, if you're in the laser engraving world. But hopefully you learned something. If you're struggling with pictures or anything, this should help you get a little bit closer to making some really good engravings. Just be sure you follow the steps. And uh, if you have any questions or anything, be sure to ask below. I'll do my best to answer them when I get around to it. And uh, if you learned anything, be sure you like and subscribe and all that good stuff. It really helps the channel grow and get out there so more people can learn. But thank you again, and let's get into it. All right, guys, so uh, today's picture will be working with my ugly face. Um, I liked the picture. I thought it was pretty clean, and it would come out good. So that's what we're going with. Uh, we uploaded it into Photoshop, and we're going to do a little bit of adjustment to it. First off, what I want you guys to do is go up to Enhance, and then we're going to go down to Convert to a Black and White Image. We're going to click on that, and then you're going to see this black and white menu pop up with a bunch of presets play around with those find which one you like the best for this particular picture i went with portrait mode but newspaper sometimes looks good i mean just look at them and see which one comes out the best click on that and press ok then you're going to go back to enhance go to adjust lighting find shadows and highlights then you're going to click on that and you'll come into the shadows and highlights menu uh, I take my midtones and I pull that sucker all the way down and try to get rid of as much of those as I possibly can and just leave my whites and blacks and let them create the image. Um, it just tends to work better for the laser. A lot of grays will pick up as little dots in your dither pattern and make dark places that you don't want. So it's just worth it, in my opinion, to do that. Uh, once you're happy with how that looks, you're going to press OK. Go back to Enhance. You're going to go to back to lighting and go to levels. You can press control L to get there too. And this is going to control your black and whites and how much of it shows up in the image. Once you are done, um, once you found that, press OK. You'll see this graph below. You'll see the three triangles below the graph. You'll have a black one, a gray one, and a white one. You want to move the black triangle to the right and you want to move the white triangle to the left, right where that graph spikes up the most. That will enrich your blacks and your whites and you can move that gray bar in the middle to the left or right to adjust if it's darker or lighter. Um, that's kind of like your gamma setting. But once you're happy with that and you got your levels where you want them, you want to click OK. Then you want to go up to the top and go to Image and you want to find Resize and you want to go to Image Size. Once you find that, you're going to click OK. That'll bring you into the Resize Image menu. And what you want to do is you want to find your resolution down there. It's 325 is what I have mine set to. That's the same as your DPI that you're going to use in Lightburn. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that your DPI matches your resolution so your dither pattern is one for one for the pixel pattern that you're getting. It's a little complicated, but it just works really well. I recommend doing that. Also adjust your height and width if you're not happy with the size of your image and want to make it bigger before you import it into Lightburn. That way you're not... Uh, distorting any of the pixels or anything before you're importing. So once you're happy with uh, your resolution and your size and everything, you're going, you're going to want to click OK. After that, you want to go click at the top, find File, Save As, and when you're in the Save menu, you want to go to the Save As Type. You want to find PNG, click on that, and then save your file as a PNG. I find those type of photo files work the best in Lightburn. But um, JPEGs work fine too, but PNGs just a little nicer. Alright guys, we're in Lightburn now, so you want to go up to File, go to Import, find the image you just saved, and you want to click on that to import it into Lightburn. Once you have it into Lightburn, I don't like the excess I have around it. This is a little trick I use for cropping. It's called masking. I drew a red square line around the portion that I want to keep, and everything outside of that square is going to go away. 
And once I've done, uh, got both of them selected, I right click. You go to apply mask to image and that will clean that image up and get rid of all that excess. Another trick is you can right click it again and you can flatten the image mask and that will get rid of your red line and just leave your picture in that same shape of the, of the shape you use to do your mask. But it's pretty cool. I'll show you guys some more advanced tricks with this. Um, you can do some really cool tricks with pictures with uh, the, the clipping tool uh, with shapes and everything. But once you uh, have done that, if you need to, you want to right click your picture and you'll see this where it's in blue it says adjust image click on that and you'll go into the adjust menu settings which is a uh, super nifty if you're working with pictures once you're in there you'll see the image mode I've got highlighted I go usually with Jarvis Stucky's another good one most of the other ones don't work that well with pictures but you can play around and see if you have any luck but for me Jarvis and Stucky's the best too typically um, once I have that selected, we're going to go to DPI and we're going to make this the same resolution that we used in Photoshop. So for, for Photoshop, I changed my resolution to 325 and in Lightburn, I want it to be 325 as well. That way every pixel is accounted for and it makes a nice dither pattern. Now we want to go over to Enhance Radius and Enhance Amount. I usually go up about 25 and 50, but you can play around with it and find what works best for you. And uh, once you're happy with everything, you're going to press OK. All right, guys, this is my layer settings um, for the image. I'm running at 200 millimeters a second, 22 power, zero minimum power, 325 DPI, Jarvis mode, and I'm running 180 scan angle because that starts from the top and works its way down on my machine. Once you're happy with your image and layer settings, you want to press OK. And then you want to find at the top where it says Preview. You can press Alt-P as well. That'll bring up the preview menu, but it's the little TV button at the top where my cursor is on the screen. You want to click that. This brings up your preview menu. You want to scroll in, it'll look really bad until you scroll in and zoom in on the photo, but this gives you an idea of what the picture will kind of look like. It also tells you how long it'll take. You can also start your job in the middle of it from here. It's a really nice feature and it helps you prevent yourself from making mistakes. But once you've got everything said and done, you want to go ahead and start this bad boy and we'll see how it turns out. said and done I sanded it down with some 220 grit sandpaper by hand sometimes I'll use an orbital sander if it's a real big one and just lightly go about it but hand sand with 220 grit um, blow it off with an air compressor add a little satin clear coat and you've got a beautiful engraving I probably could have went a little lighter on this maybe 20 power instead of 22 but I'm still happy with the way it came out especially for it being my ugly mug it turned out pretty good you can see uh, all the little dot patterns all that cool stuff you've got going on and uh, I'm I'm happy with the results. And here's a side-by-side -side example of it next to the uh, picture on the monitor. Um, just wanted you guys to see, you know, maybe you could see that it came out pretty close to the original. Um, like I said, probably could have went a little lower on the power, but other than that, I'm, I'm excited with this. I don't think any customer would be upset with this if they got it in the mail after ordering it. And after the satin finish is on it, I mean, it's just got a nice look. It's very uh, good engraving. Um, you could probably remove that background and just make it even nicer. I was just lazy and didn't feel like doing that, but maybe I'll go over um, a video on how to remove backgrounds and how to easily do it because that seems to be a big pain in the butt. But yeah, pretty happy with the results. If you guys learned something, be sure you leave a like, follow, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, leave me a question below in the comments section if, you, uh, if, you're, if you're struggling and need some help. I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, thank you guys again for watching. I'll try to make another video this weekend. Thanks.